So when we look at the first core objective in terms of pushing Islamic finance industry towards risk sharing, I must say after more than two decades, it has failed miserably. We were not able to achieve this risk sharing for various reasons. I just want to highlight quickly some of the key reasons. One was the pioneers didn't realize that they were actually trying to play football or soccer in a rugby field. There was no soccer field in the world. And we were trying to play football in a huge field, which resembled a uh, football field, but it was not a football field. So when we're trying to do risk sharing in a fractional reserve banking model, so every country across the globe which has a financial intermediation has been modeled based on fractional reserve banking system. In a nutshell, it means if I put $100 deposit in a bank in Malaysia or in UK, the bank will keep a certain reserve, could be 3%, could be 10%, and it will then churn out. So in the system, if you deposit $100, and let's say the reserve is 10%, it can churn out 900 pounds of liquidity immediately through the fractional reserve banking cycle. So the fractional reserve banking makes credit intermediation cheaper, better, faster. Why it's cheaper? Because it can create lots of liquidity. And it pays very little to the depositors because deposits are protected by deposit insurance schemes across the world. It's cheaper. And it's better because the capitalist doesn't need to pay more than a, a small fixed return. So it is better for him. He doesn't want to share his upside. And he can grow his, his wealth through a fixed return to uh, the banks. And it was quicker because the amount of due, due diligence you do on credit intermediation is much less than equity intermediation. Because all you need to do is look at your history of financial.